Welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. Thought you'd like that introduction. We've been sitting around talking in the pre-show with uh, Garrett, and uh, I think we're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, he's a, I think he's going to give us a lot of good information on CNCs and the CNC he has, and uh, you just might be interested in the one that he has and want to buy it. Uh, they're actually at a pretty good price. I was checking them out today, so... Uh, before we get started, let me talk about my wonderful sponsors, and they are Devobal Technologies for web design and development and hosting. Visit devobal.com. FastCap, innovative product for the professional woodworker. Go to fastcap.com. Rockler, 60 years in woodworking. Create with confidence. Visit rockler.com. Bearwood Supply Company, your best choice for hard to find woodworking. I'll get it right in a second. Woodworking supplies. Go to bearwood.com. Cling Spore, the sanding specialist. Woodworkingshop.com and scroll saw. Seiko the scroll saw specialist seiko.com. Oh, I'm having a hard time remembering all that. So uh, just don't remember tonight, if you haven't already, why don't you go ahead over there and hit that subscribe button and subscribe to me. And if you wouldn't mind, give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And I know that everybody on the panel would appreciate a thumbs up for this. And if you hit that little bell up there in the corner, It'll remind you anytime I go live or post a new video. So don't forget to do those things. And let's start off with the introduction of the panel. And the panel is starting with Brenda. I'm Brenda G of Brenda G's Designs. You find me about any place on the internet if you look for Brenda G's Designs. I have uh, a... Brenda, uh, we can't hear you, or at least I can't. I can, yeah. Can anybody else hear? Hear? Yeah. Yep, I hear. <laughs> I hear do I need a megaphone, Russell? <laughs> must be your it must be your speaker russ yeah she sounds fine to me yeah yeah keep going brenda he don't matter anyway lord have mercy <laughs> tell you what this Bless is first your heart. Show, it? Bless your heart i said you rookie oh well i'm brenda g brenda g's designs for anybody who don't know me i've got well, first uh, malfunction of the night is i guess my earbuds quit working <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so Does that you want my hair to fix my paper or not? Or not? <laughs> Try it again Brad. Ev well, evidently, evidently he forgot that the panel makes a show <laughs> <laughs> See yeah, 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 no. Professionalism Professionalism Alright <laughs> so That's what it was My 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 earbuds went dead on me, so I couldn't hear. So I had to change it back to the manual speaker. Oh, so you don't know you what you said about you then? Oh. Well, no, I didn't. But I can guarantee you I can replay the video tonight <laughs> after uh, the show's <laughs> ended. And I can hear everything. Uh -oh. <laughs> so in trouble. Dirt <laughs> yeah, I would have thought they would have held a charge longer. It actually says 90% on them. So I don't know why they went. Well, it's lying. It's your case. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's somehow it's lying. So I don't know. So unless my phone, I need to turn the Bluetooth off of my phone. It interfered with it somehow, some way. Russell, I don't know. It just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay, go ahead, Brenda. Reintroduce yourself since I didn't get to hear you introduce yourself first time. You never well, let her. Mostly because you talked over top of me and I couldn't get it done. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. I'm Brenda G. I'm Brenda G's design. <laughs> I heard that somewhere. Did you hear that? All right. I can well, hear you, Brenda. I, I got an Etsy store, and it's called Brenda G's Designs, of all things. And I've also got a YouTube channel. I do some crafting on there. I do some comedy on there. Uh, I give free advice on there. I do a live stream every Thursday night with a fellow named Matt Hawes that some of you may have heard of. 
and uh, we have a lot of fun. They're on the live stream on YouTube at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and we'd love for all of you to join us there Thursday night to have a little fun. I do giveaways on the channel, so uh, that, that's me. Okay, Russell. <laughs> hey, Russell. <laughs> the speaker must not be working I think again. His, I think his he here he went on again. Russell, you need new batteries. All right, Al, you're next. <laughs> okay, Al, pick it up. Hi, I'm Al Forte, Odessa Woodworking and Maker Shop. You can find me anywhere as Kilroy79763. Look at that old cute guy right there with them little beady eyes. But anyway, just search for Kilroy79763. Uh, Instagram, uh, here. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I stream my shenanigans 2 p.m. on Tuesday, 2 p.m. Central, and uh, have a YouTube channel. And, of course, uh, do the Nostalgia Podcast. Two old guys in their 50s and 60s talking about the 70s and 80s. Anyway, great to be here. Can't wait to to hear Garrett's um, CNC talk. Thank you. Okay, Paul. Uh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Paul Corliss, Paul's Messy Workshop. You can find me on YouTube at Paul's Messy Workshop or on Instagram. And you can find me here on Saturday nights just making Russ's life miserable. Okay, Chris. Oh, all of y'all do a good job at that. So. <laughs> Success! Uh, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, gang. Chris here from the old Cranky Workshop. You can find me on Facebook and YouTube. And I'll be in the shop all this week. Finishing up a Noah's Ark and bringing my uh, pallet project over the finish line. So then I got to do the video work. So, so remember, get those pallets, get working. I got to see some work out there this year. That's all I got. Uh, Jim. Uh, Jim Bashir is from Driveway Workshop. And what Chris said, get your, your pallet stuff in so uh, somebody can beat Chris this year. <laughs> so, I don't see it happening. Yeah. So this should be a good show tonight. Uh, Garrett does mentoring for CNC pe uh, people that are using their CNTs and starting uh, businesses for the out of their home. So if you've got the questions, throw them out in the chat. If we don't get to them, put them back in the chat, and we will uh, get them into Garrett. But this should be a pretty good show, folks. So off to Donald. I'm Donald Matthews from Donald Loves the Files of Wood Shop on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I've got a website, redneckknowhow.com. Carry on. Dixon. I'm Dixon Hoffman, and you can find me at Hoffman Signs and Decals. And it says on our vinyl signs, carved signs, and 3D printing, anything. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Carl Gentry goes, Russ, can you hear me? If you're talking to me, yes, I can hear you. Uh, but you're typing, so I don't know how you figure out I can hear you. Or is, should it be, Russ, can you see me? So, But Carl, glad you're here. Uh, Lynn's Handcrafted Woods Designs is here. Aussie Man, Bill, from Australia, all the way from Australia. It's actually Sunday morning. He's eating breakfast right now when he's watching us. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Breakfast. Yep, he's eating breakfast. So uh, going back through, Mike Morris uh, is over on Facebook. And yes, we are simultaneously watching Facebook, Twitch, uh, and uh, YouTube, the chat. I have it up here, right up here, so I can see all three. And Twitch is live. If something into Twitch or Facebook, I can see what you're uh, asking and the question, and I will try. And like Jim said, sometimes the People get to chatting and it goes by pretty quick. So if, if we missed your question, ask it again. Don't feel like we're neglecting you because that's not the point. And that's not what we're doing. It's that the chat sometimes streams so, fi uh, so fast because people are talking to each other and uh, we just miss it. Uh, Michelle Marcuse out there. And you don't know how many times I called him Michael over the years. <laughs> just like uh, Debbie. Do you remember that, Debbie? <laughs> yeah. The, I don't think the first half a dozen or so shows I call Brenda Debbie for some reason. I'm not figured out how why I did that. But he's even got my uh, banker doing it now. 
Yep. Chris Nealon. He's out there. I appreciate Dan uh, from Dan yeah. Hingy Woodworking. Your Seiko guy's out here, too. Uh, who's that? Oh, is it Michael? Michael from Seiko? Th Michael from yeah, Seiko? Let me, let me scroll up and make sure I'm telling you the right thing. I hope he's out there. Mike Morris. Is, yeah. Mike Morris. Mike Mor yeah, Mike Morris. Yeah. Mike he's Morris. Not, yeah, Mike. He's on the best Facebook. Dead burn scroll saw in the world. Let me tell you, I own one. I have one. And uh, I use it all the time. It's a great scroll saw. If you ever need a scroll saw, go to Seiko. Just type in Seiko in your Google search and you will come upon Seiko's site and go there and buy one. I'm sure he'd appreciate it and I would too. I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. I've used, uh, I have an Excalibur. I have a DeWalt. I've had uh, a Delta. I've had several over the years. And uh, Seiko is exclusively what I use. I got it set up in my shop and it's awesome. So Seiko scroll saws are, and they're one of my sponsors. I'm glad to have him. Mike Morris. Yeah, there he is. I see Mike Morris. Hey, from Mike Morris with Seiko. Yes, I've seen that. He's over on Facebook. That's the reason I missed it. I was looking on YouTube. He's over there on Facebook, but yeah, Mike, glad you're out there. Like I said, once again, uh, uh, Seiko is at the Houston, Texas woodworking show all weekend. Oh, that'd be awesome. Hey, Al, you going to the Houston, Texas woodworking show? I have to, I have to work. <laughs> <laughs> and Houston is, work. Houston is like, oh, 600 miles, I guess, which means like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have uh, Garrett here, and it's Frommy. Frommy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he's maybe from or from. Uh, uh, he's the CNC, is easy, but... he's the CNC uh, uh, expert tonight that we have with us, and so he's going to be talking about it. And uh, uh, I, what is the 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 one you use is the long mill? Yeah, long mill. Long mill CNC. Now that is kind of like a D, DIY kit that you have to uh, assemble somewhat. Yeah, yeah, you get it in pieces. Well, go ahead and uh, tell us about it. Well, let's see. The long mill, so it, it's actually kind of an unusual machine for CNCs. Most of them, you, you see, they, they they run on rails, on rods. And the long mill is a little bit unique in that it uses, like, uh-oh, like, uh, V-rails um, instead. And that, that reduces the number of parts. actually makes it a lot easier to put together. Anyway, it's got a 30 by 30 cutting space for the, for the large one that they have. And um, yeah, I, think, I guess uh, it's it takes on the standard um, trim trim router like the Makita, and then um, right. yeah, uh, pretty. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. A lot of the parts are, are three D printed for it, but it's still like really stout. You pick up the box; it's about sixty pounds when I got it in. I was going to ask you that. So when it does the Z plunge and you're going in fairly, let's say a quarter inch or so down into the material, it doesn't have mm -hmm. a lot. It doesn't give the Z to axis doesn't give or whatever. It's pretty stout. Uh, yeah. It's, it's using, it's using the, uh, I haven't, I haven't pushed it to its limit yet. I tried, I took a three sixteenths down cutter with a one inch flute length and I ran a whole length through a piece of Oak. And the oh, bit wow. only broke. The only the, I was running at 100 inches per minute, and the bit broke when I hit a knot. Yep. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's I, pretty I, stout. I, I was actually impressed. Yeah, that's pretty stout. Yeah, it is. That is pretty stout. Uh, so, in the Longworth CNC, from the videos I watched of you and everything, and having it, um, so you actually. Uh, you get the parts and you what you bolt yours down to what a piece of three quarter inch MDF? Uh yeah. Yeah, I built the table and then I then I built the yeah. Uh, sorry, well I guess what are you what are you asking? You're asking the uh, is that what I cut or is that what it's made the table's made of? No, the table's made of three quarter inch MDF. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I got another yeah. MDF board on top of that for my spoil board. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I built a good table. I built it all. <laughs> 
It's not too bad. No, I, I, I would definitely think MDF. I mean, a lot of people don't like MDF, but I happen to like it because it's uh, when you buy a piece, especially if you can keep it in a uh, climate controlled shop, uh, you don't have to worry about it swelling or expanding or anything, and it stays nice and flat. Yeah, that's the drawback with MDF. That's why I seal it. I'll take uh, water-based urethane. I'll I'll seal the whole thing before before I uh, expose it because we go through the cycles here. I'm in uh, southern Indiana, and so we we're in the Ohio Valley, and so we get the humidity during uh, midsummer. Gets pretty high. So I'm thinking of putting uh, building it in, out of eighty twenty, building my framework. Great. Brian Warner is asking out in the chat, what kind of a price range is on that CNC? This 30 by 30 is uh, $1,500. That's, so that's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, it's, that's actually for, for comparable units, it's like five to $700 lower than, than the comparable same size. Now, does that include the router or do you have to put your own router on it? That's with the router. Now the router's an add-on. They, what they did was they realized some people don't want the Makita. They offer the Makita as an add-on, but they they have the bracket. They um, they have different size brackets for the different size routers, and you know if you want to run a spindle, you know, the control box has access for a spindle as well, or control a jack for the spindle, which I don't have right now. Which which I thought that was nice. So that's that's with that and the dust the dust boot the touch plate. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, that is fifteen hundred bucks with a router. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Did they have homing switches and stuff with it too? They they actually didn't when I got it, but uh, I started to talk to them because uh, um, there's just some things I want on my machine, and homing switches is something I want. Yeah. They actually sent me homing switches to beta test. So I li I literally oh. I literally have them on right now. I do, but I'm still beta testing, so not like available. Publicly, yeah. What type of so, without it? limit switches, then you have to make sure you set the parameters in the. Uh, is it in the G code or the controller? You can set the controller to control the parameters so it don't go out of, you know, out of whack, so to speak. Uh, yeah, without without the homing switch. What it's I guess you can set it in the controls, deep, deep in the controls, which I'm not real good at when you're getting way inside of it. But uh, I think that's part of the firmware settings that you, you can get into to say it can only travel so far. But when you don't have homing switches it, it and you turn it on, it, it just assumes it's at home and it's got all this free space to work with. And so, right. yeah. And so most CNCs, in the beginning, people learn to just set their zero point you know, somewhere on a project. The nice thing with the homing switches is you can have multiple different types of projects. So, like you can do production type of work, where you can have uh, multiple different parts laid up on different. How to put it? You have different zero locations that are all preset in the memory. That's where homing switches. Huh? How many axes? Three. 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 Yeah. X, Y, and Z. Yeah. What What type of controller are you using? I'm using G Sender. Uh, so they've got the, uh, what, most people know of universal G-code sender. And then I guess the other one, there's, there's quite a few of them out there. There's JSCNC. Um, then there's the paid ones, Mach 3 and Mach 4. So I use G-Sender, which is, it's another open source freebie. And uh, Long Mill has kind of taken hold of it and they've uh, modified it. They've actually added a lot of features to it, like surfacing. You can, instead of having to design your own surfacing program for your spoil board, you type in the dimensions in the in the controller, set up your zero point, and it'll write the whole program out for you. Nice. So those are some of the features. One of the other one I really like was what they added was a, uh, you know, so some of you guys have uh, CNC. So you, when you set your zero with a touch plate, and you use touch plates, okay. So if you don't have that touch plate connected, have you ever driven your bit right into the touch plate? All the time, yes. Oh, yeah. well, that's how you. That's how you test the Z axis. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's how you make sure. See if it flexes. Yeah. All right, right, right. That is one way to check. Yeah. But uh, they, they added something to it where you, you start the cycle, and it will not start until you take that plate up and touch it to it to make sure that they have that connection. Nice. And then you set the plate back down, then you hit the button again. 
Yeah, so, uh, Onefinity does that too. What's up? Onefinity does that too. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. Onefinity is not not a, an Android or uh, a Adreno, is it? A what? It's not. It's not a Gerbil based machine, is it? No. Well, I don't know. It must be. Yes. It must be. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. a Gerbil. Yeah, I know it. It works off of a. It works. There's a Raspberry Pi in the controller, and that's what it runs um, off. Of. A Raspberry Pi. See, the X Carve is an Arduino, and that's that's why I was asking what type of what type of control board what are you using to drive the the X, the Y, and the Z with? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Gerbil. Yeah. So you so nice, yeah. They got a nice firmware they threw on top of your Gerbil. Now, is that you you get that with the machine? Is there any limits to that, or is it open source? Uh, your firmware. The, uh, uh, as far as the firmware, that uh, so to my knowledge, in my technical level of that, so you got the, uh, the 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 board, which is Adreno, and then you have the Gerbil on top of that, the firmware, and um, at, at that point, I'm like tech stupid, right? It's I'm the mechanical guy, I'm not the technical guy. So when it comes to that, I have to get on the phone and say, what does that mean? What what what's a dollar sign J equals three? Yeah. <laughs> <That kind of laughs> stuff. Yeah, they have a they have a real nice firmware on top of that, just like uh, just like Paul's machine. They have their own firmware on top of Gerbil. It looks it looks really nice. Okay. C and C dashboard, your C dashboard. Now, yeah. uh, somebody, I, I I'm sorry. That, go ahead. Does, does that have the fourth axis availability as of this time, or is it just no? Three no, it's just three. Just no, to my knowledge, they're, they're not planning on doing that. Yeah, Brian. I think what Brian is trying to do is he makes duck calls, and he wants to engrave the duck calls with it. So I know on a laser you can unplug the Y-axis uh, stepper motor and then plug in a rotary device to it so you can, you know, engrave mugs or whatever. Right. Well, I don't know about doing that. So, yeah. just, just to play around. I've never done there's only a couple of for the fourth axis uh, CNCs that I know of that are actually um, what you would say uh, home or hobbyist type machines, and one of them is the digital wood carver. But now that's their big machine, and that thing is like four or five thousand dollars for their big machine with it uh, fourth axis. But it'll do spindles and stuff. But I mean, you're talking about adding. You're talking about four or five thousand dollars of a machine, so that's a big difference from what uh, uh, Garrett's trying to talk about. You know, you're talking about a fifteen hundred dollar machine. Yeah, I like I like this unit uh, because of its simplicity and um, it, the the price uh, is. It's got a good price relative to its structure. So yeah. So. It's yeah, fifteen hundred dollars is. I mean, to get a CNC that actually you you can communicate with and cut stuff with for fifteen hundred dollars. That's that's not bad at all. Uh, uh, the smallest their small machine for the digital wood carver, which is like a twelve by twenty or eighteen by sixteen or something like that. Either way, their small machine is almost three thousand dollars. So, uh, and I think. Garrett, Go you ahead. see any were using your CNC? Did you see any issues with your ball screws clogging up with wood chips or anything or dust? Or are there wipers on them bearings? There aren't wipers on it, and so the, the screws are exposed to, to the so they use these V rails. Yep, it's, yep. Okay, so you can see it right here. It's got these V rails right here, and of course, this yes. is the workstation here. You come around, I don't want to knock my mouse off the table here. Russ, put them full screen. Come around, and here's the screw. Yeah, yeah, on, just, see, yeah, yeah they're, they're open. That's why I was curious if you had any issues with them clogging up or. I actually don't. Okay. I, I don't. Okay. I was uh, I was uh, concerned about that at first, but I, but I don't. Garrett, would you go back one more time and show us those again? I put you on full screen so people can actually. Uh, that's see that's, that's what. That's why I want full screen. Okay. Yep. Oh, and I went full screen for you. So there you go. Well, here, here's your V rails, and. And then you come around, yeah. and there's your that's your wire screw there. Yep. And then your oh, okay. So no belt. There's all screw driven. It's open. Yeah. It's all, yeah. 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 Okay. No, yeah. 
got another one. I bet, uh, I bet those those V rails are really sturdy since, since they're kind yeah, of. Yeah, I mean like that's that, that right? looks like how thick of aluminum is that? Like one oh. one eight. Uh oh, where'd Garrett go? Oh, I don't know. We dropped Garrett somehow. He come you, unplugged. Are you there, Russ? I'm here. Yeah, I'm so here. Too. Uh, We're here. Well, that was fun, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Russ? Did somebody I'm trying to get me out of solo layout, so give me a there break. Go. But we did lose him. That's Man, what you call a cliffhanger. That's that way. <laughs> To be Stay tuned back. next week for more CNC. There he is. There he is. There he is. He's, He's back. back. There he is. There he is. Garrett, we lost you there for a second. I know. I know. I was, I, I was moving my mouse all the way up there. Yeah, we he got you back. Like, he didn't like being between me, between me, Paul, and uh, me and Paul. All right. So yeah. you say, uh, yeah. Garrett, we're back with you. And uh, you say you have the Makita. I think it is the Makita router up there. Yeah. Yeah, so you can enter change. So you can, I saw that you can use a DeWalt or how uh, uh, they actually give you several bases that you can use. This, this bracket here is, yeah, this bracket without router is an add on. And uh, if you don't want it, then uh, use a little bracket the size uh, unit that you want. Or yeah, if you want to, if you'd like the DeWalt or Ryobi, then, uh, then you get the bracket for that. Or Hey, uh, who makes the proximity sensor that's on the Z-axis? Can you look on the face and see what the name is? Kind of looks like ours. <laughs> oh, no, wait, they're blue. They're it, not, it does, though. It looks like a jerky. Green. They're not green. They're blue. I just got bad coloring. It's probably chinese mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, going to talk about bad about my Chinese friends, huh? Oh, no, not at all. Oh, but no. a, a funny story, though. Um, we got a, a couple of sensors back into our our uh, returns area so they could cut them open and see why they went bad. And the Chinese copied them, and they spelled the company name wrong on the face of the sensor when they did their print plates to copy our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they do that a lot, you know. I'm gonna never yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back to you, Russ. <laughs> well, um, uh, you so uh, it will cut. Uh, uh, what's the biggest? Uh, is it thirty by thirty that it will cut? So its fingerprint's a little bit bigger. There again. Okay, so. What will you can actually with the 30 by 30? What is actually the cut that you can make the largest cut you can make with a 30 by 30? 31 by 33. Okay, so its footprint is actually probably five or six inches both directions, a little bit bigger. The is 48 inches by 48 inches. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, then you need some more footprint for the full box of the center, right? Right, so it's a little bit bigger. So, yeah, yeah that, that I mean. I was using those V rails like that. Uh, I mean, that was uh, really, they are stocky. They're uh, they're like quarter inch extruded aluminum. They're two inch by two inch. And the ones in the back are three inch by three inch. And then they doubled up on it. And so I was I was an engineer for a long time, and uh, you know into the structural stuff. And it, it was really cool to look at the at the thing. And as I'm Dissecting the machine, I, I can see how they go through their process. Uh, I just take engineers' mindsets apart when I'm putting stuff together, and I can see that how they were taking advantage of moments of inertia to uh, build up the strength of this machine of the, of, the, of the gantry by doubling up on angle plates. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's all. Uh, I actually think it was overkill, but you know, it actually was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nobody's nobody's gonna gonna stop uh, stop an overconstructed machine. I don't think. Yeah, I no, guess no, no, no. That, and that's true. You know, that's true. When I looked at, it, I was thinking like, wow, that's a little overkill, especially for a the size of router that you're putting on there, because uh, the you know, there's no way that a router can take as much force as the machine is going to put on it. So the router right. would give away, or the bit would break first. Yeah, yeah. I actually I did a review video on it, I, and in that video, I pushed the machine as hard as I could. 
I was trying to get the machine to stall. And it, it, everything else gave way but the machine. There are four things you can lose, right? You could you could break the bit. Your clamps could give way. Um, the machine could stall or the router could stall. And I got all three, but I didn't get the machine, the, the, the movement to stall. Right. Wow. That's impressive. Now, what, what, when you say, I'm curious, when you say that you pushed the machine to those limits, though, when you went back, did you have to recheck everything or do anything to it? Or you went back and did a normal CNC cutting it pretty well? Was it back in line again? Yeah, I was scared. I was pushing it hard. So I had to double check everything, right? I mean, everything was in good shape as far as I was concerned. But, yeah, I was pushing it that hard that uh, um, it scared me that I was pushing it too hard. You see, that amazes me because the piece of crap that I have, if I'd have pushed it that hard, it would have flew apart. <laughs> I'd have had orange running all over my shop at the moment. <laughs> so, yeah, that's 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 good. That's really says a lot about it that it didn't, you know, that didn't bend the Z axis or the X or the Y axis or the X, you know, that it didn't mess up something. Something gave before the actual machine gave. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all wear components on it, except for the rollers. Are all, they're made of Delrin. They have to be. That's mecha going on. Um, right. They got it. They got the V wheels, so they and they're on aluminum, so they got to protect that aluminum. So they've used Delrin, which was a good plastic to use, but eventually it'll wear out. So that's one of the wear components. So I figure probably about a year off to replace them. Yeah, uh, Brian yes. Warner says that they have smaller versions. I believe they have a 12 by uh, 12 by 12, 12 by 30 12. and a 12 by 12, right? Yeah. yeah, 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 12 by 30 and a 12 by 12. So they all actually offer a little bit smaller version. Just announced an end. Square version. Four foot by four foot. I don't know when it's coming out. They're just announced. Wow. Yeah. So uh, it's it's long mill. If somebody if uh, somebody would please look up there. Um, sure. You, Russ, is it okay? Address. You want me to show the pictures? You, if you don't mind, uh, uh, is it all right, Garrett? If he shows the pictures. Yeah, I'll give. Uh, go ahead, Dixon. Go through. Well, the it's, a, it's it's already it's already on there. Yeah, if you zoom in on my picture, I already did. There, there they they show the difference the different setups setups here. And then, uh, what my question was, but I think you answered it now. It looked like I thought there were going to be metal V wheels on the aluminum, and then usually you got to do a break in on it, but then you get wear. But if they got that Delron, that's that's a lot better. Those are the same wheels I've got on that shape book. Oh, they're uh, Delrin like that. Yeah, oh. Delrin and, and UH, UHMW will it'll yeah. take a long time to wear, but they're running on aluminum. It'll still take a long time to wear. I have cracked them on mine, though. I mean, I not, when I uh, took my old one apart to upgrade it, I saw a couple of the wheels were cracked. So, so they anyway, will break. Uh, long mill... CNC. If uh, somebody posts the webs, uh, their website on, I'll end the uh, chat, please, for Long Mill. Um, I, I'm kind of impressed with it uh, for the amount of money uh, that you would have to, or that you would put into it. I'm I'm really kind of impressed with it. As a matter of fact, I'm actually thinking about. Uh, uh, going with that rather than my digital wood. I don't know. I'm in a, in a tizzy right now. Which one I want to go with, but that's the piece that I put in the, the website. Uh, I better put it in again. Um, it's I, the name of their, com their company is. I, I got the website posted. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, Al took care of that for me. Thank you, Al. You're welcome. You can call me Freddie. But I'd oh, rather thanks. be called Al. Oh, me, Al. Al the man. Yeah. Ellen Garrett sent you if you check it out. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, I think you said if you say Garrett sent you whatever, you get a kickback on it. And that's no problem. I don't have a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't like for him, uh, you know, I, I like the machine. I like the way the company, uh, when I, yeah, 
when I was looking around and I engaged with them and I liked the way they were dealing with me and their, their philosophy that they were saying, if, if they don't think that the, what the buyer wants to do is going to fit their machine, they're going to tell you that this is not, this isn't the machine for you. You need to go to this company or that company. And I, I thought that was, that's really, really, I'm all about customer service. I mean, when, when I do my videos, um, and I do video, I've got a video out there that says, uh, how to avoid buying, making a bad purchase. And so I walk people through these things that, that what you want to avoid when you're, when you're looking for a CNC router. And, um, I, I told them the first thing is if they don't even talk to you on the phone, right? I, I had one, yeah. I said, they didn't have a phone number on their site. And so I emailed them. I said, give me a phone number so I can call you. And they came back and I said, uh, in the email that we feel it's better that we serve you through email that we can do that better that's not what i asked i said give me a phone number so they got struck off my list you know, that's not yeah. good customer service as far as i'm concerned it's after the fact of the purchase that's that's huge because inevitably for the cnc owners that you guys are uh, you're going to have issues at some point and and you want to have that support yes and i agree with you that's that makes the product worth buying is the support because mm -hmm. I don't care if you uh, own a Mercedes Benz uh, as a car, sooner or later, you're going to have problems with it. It's got to go back to the shop. So you want to make sure that you have the support, the shop that can work on the thing to make it work right. So yeah, the support is you like know, trouble, troubleshooting them can, you know, most of us don't understand like me, you know, don't understand the deeper stuff in the stuff. Right. And so it's like, I, I want somebody that knows that machine like it's their own. And right. so if you, can, if you can't get them on the phone uh, to get that support, that's it's not worth my time. Especially if you never played with a CNC or something like that, you're going to need somebody to talk to. Yeah. I'd yeah. wear them out if I, had, if I got one. What's this little doohickey there? <laughs> well, you know, that's what amazes me is – and I'm not trying to make people look like an idiot, but sometimes they are an idiot. Uh, is they buy these machines and have no clue whatsoever as to what they're buying. I, I bought a laser, okay? And I had a, pretty much a clue what it was all about. I have owned a CNC, I owned a smaller laser. So I made an upgrade to a bigger laser, but my point is you buy these machines, you have no clue how to use them, how they work or anything. And then you want to complain when you get it and it don't work right. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it's the idiot behind the button that's pushing that don't know how to use it. I mean, so that's always amazed me. And just like with this, uh, his uh, Garrett CNC, don't buy it if you don't understand what you're trying to get into because you'll be, you'll be aggravated and it'll be a failure. You know, buy it, have some understanding what you're getting into before you buy the thing or go buy one that's totally plug and play. You just take it out of the box, set it on the thing and, you know, put your project into it and it goes because it just aggravates the heck out of me when somebody buys something and they have no clues what they're buying. Generally, the biggest problem with the tool is the tool behind it. Yes. Yep. <laughs> no, the, not the tool behind it, the idiot behind the tool. Well, that's the, yeah, the tool. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I think they, you know, people have buy these, they have good invention, right? They, they see a lot of amazing stuff that people create and they get that this, this, so this is what my YouTube channel is about. There's two things pretty much. Is one is, yeah, we got this 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 um, this creative side of us, and 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 at some point in life we start feeling like we want to get that out. And so I think what happens is when people are searching for it, they come across CNC and they oh I can make that amazing thing, and then they buy the machine and then they're a deer in the headlights. And that's yeah. what I built my YouTube channel around is to try to help those people. And uh, really, they, they yeah. that, that for me, the, part of it, and they're used to drag and drop. And it, I don't yes, think it, it, <laughs> and that's yeah. it. They, they Not that easy. 
They see these amazing things. Yep. They think I can take this picture and I can just put it over, drag it and drop it into that software. And that thing's going to produce it. And it don't that's, work like that. That's some well, of the big companies advertising. That's yep. their fault because they're yep. advertising to sell like it's that easy and it's not. Yes. But I was looking at the specs on this. Hey, that, I'm, I'm impressed. That's got a TB6600 controller. And if you're going to buy controllers and build a CNC, that's what you want to buy. The hardest thing for me with the CNC wasn't the CNC. It was the software and yeah. trying to figure out the software because the CNC only does what the software tells it to do right. anyway. Exactly. And yeah. so, so being a, uh, a person that had never dealt with that kind of software, that's where I got hooked on Garrett's channel is he's got a bunch of, of stuff about uh, Vectric software and he explains it real well. And that's what a beginner in CNC needs is how to understand the software. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Garrett, we had a question out in the chat that uh, Len asked. He goes, uh, how does your machine run in different types of weather? He's in a shop that doesn't have any climate control, so it's hot in the summer, and he uses a wood stove for heat in the winter. <laughs> and now I'm, up, I'm in northwest Indiana, and we've got a little different weather than you've got down by Kentucky. So, you know, that's a good question for me, too. I have no your mic's cutting out. Mike, sure. I see on the spot more. Now, when it gets cold, I don't know. We, you know we're in an unheated garage, but we got the heaters working now, I think. I don't know how. I don't, we'll see how it goes when I got icicle thing off of it. They, so I mean, the electronics like the cold. Them stepper motors I was gonna say, love it I when, it's, it when it's 20 degrees, but not, you know, not 20 below. Yeah, they, they still run cooler. They love the cool weather. They run cooler. I don't really? think it's a problem with the electronics. The heat would be a problem with electronics because electronics do not like heat, period. But uh, the only problem I would see is he's using a three quarter inch, uh, you know, particle board or whatever for the base. But as long as you seal that really, really good so moisture can't get into it. Because that's the biggest problem with the particle board. You, moisture penetrates, it swells, and then the, and then if it gets hot, it shrinks. It can go back and forth, so it can move. And actually, I've seen it bubble. So if you seal that particle board good, where there's no moisture going to get into it, you know, there wouldn't be a problem. But as far as electronics, I think you could run that sucker at 32 below and it'd work. You know, yeah, the only, thing, the only thing you only think he'll have a little more torque because of the grease inside them bearings on them on them thompson's on them screws but otherwise yeah. i think you'd be fine yeah i, I think, think the biggest problem like me and russ would have would be the humidity yeah and with mm -hmm. us corrosion is the issue yeah corrosion <laughs> but now you once again the, the most of it's aluminum now what are the lead screws made out of do you know uh, Garrett? Oh, they're right. yeah the, the nuts are a uh they're all they, they, yeah, they, so you they, just keep you know, a little oil on them and they'll be fine. Yeah. I always, I always uh, put like three and one on them. WD 40 yeah. and duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> Do they have no, just backlash? A little, uh, just a little lubrication, a little three and uh, three and one oil on them every once in a while. They'll, they'll yeah. be fine. That's it. Yeah, WD 40. WD 40. You know, it's actually. You keep on saying WD-40, and who said that? WD-40 is not a lubricant? Didn't you say that, Al? Yeah. yeah. You don't want to put that on. Lubricant. Yeah, you don't want to put that on there. Don't put that on there. you got to right. use a light oil. No, uh, WD-40. <laughs> you know what the WD stands for? Border dispersion. Water dispersion. Yes. 40. Yeah. It was their 40th try to get it to get rid of the water. Hey, it's Danny wiped fishing. down his guns with it. It's good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's you could use that to clear it. You could use that to clean up the bearings. You could use that to clean up the bearings, but you better oil them after. Of course, he was Sorry. usually you trying to get my, my fingerprint rust off of them, but you know. <laughs> Real quick, you know what the most biggest component in WD 40 is? Fish oil. Fish oil. 
I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, it is fish oil. Yeah. Fish, fish, fish. Everybody uses it for a lubricant, but it really wasn't designed for that. It helps, but it's not designed for that. I use it more. I use it more for getting rust off things. To be honest. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But uh, hey, uh, Garrett, anybody out the, there have any more questions for the? Uh, uh, I think we're caught up to, on questions. I am a deer in the headlights. That's why I'm waiting till I can figure things out. Uh, you're talking <laughs> about uh, uh, CNCs, yeah. Chris, I want to tell you, um, don't buy one of these machines unless you have kind of an idea of how they work and everything. I mean, unless you just want to buy it and have the money and then sit there and figure it out. But when you buy it, don't get frustrated because you are having problems working with it. Because I tell you what, that's the biggest issue that I see in these groups that I'm in with the lasers and everything else. They're buying the machine. We're talking about a housewife that sees that she can create all these fancy things and sell them and make money off of them. She buys this two thousand dollar laser and it comes in and she puts it in her garage and she can't get the damn thing to work and she posts on there i don't know what i'm doing wrong i mean i pushed the button i did this i did that but she has no clue as to how the machine works and i it just fascinates me that they would i mean i'm not gonna buy anything I'm smart enough that I'm not going to buy anything unless I pretty well know up front how it's going to work. And I feel sorry for these people that invest all this money that something that they think is going to be plug and play. And like Donald or what said earlier, just drag and drop it over and, and it, it just miraculously cuts it or produces it, but that's not going to happen. So, you know, don't buy one of these things unless you want to sit down and learn and take the time to learn how how they work, whether it be a 3D printer, whether it be a CNC, whether it be a laser. You need to understand the mechanics and how and the software before you ever go in that step. And yeah, you can go on YouTube and, and watch where people are putting them together. Yeah. But also uh, the main thing, go in and watch it. Uh, some of the videos about using the software and stuff. Because yeah. that's what's going to hold you up. They all yes. get mixed up. There's two softwares, and they get mixed up between CAD programs and post-processors, yeah. and you have to know both of them. Yeah. So you, you have, you have your and there's, free, there's free design softwares out there that you can go online, what, Esol, Carbide Create, and there's other freebies, SketchUp and things. And learn, learn the design aspect. Then there's the CAM aspect, which is yeah. the, when you're setting up the yeah. router, Tell them what where that router bit is going to go, and then you have the the, the post process. Not that hard as long as you know what post to use. And most of the softwares actually have that information. It's the control software. Then the, that's when you get the router and the control software. I tell people all the time. I've seen this so much that I, I I probably have way too many videos telling people this. Is don't start cutting stuff. I've seen so many beautiful pieces of wood destroyed because. Of as soon as they got that in, they just started cutting and break bits, a nice piece of, of maple or something. It's yeah. air cut the thing. Just get it to move yeah. around without bits. Yeah. So I'm actually building a course now to, to help people with that. I mean, inevitably, people are going to be getting into it. And I understand why. They, they want to create something. And this looks good. It's just you get across the bridge, you get your machine, you're like, oh, my God, what now? <laughs> yeah. If anything, at least test it on a piece of pink foam so you're not damaging and wasting wood and yeah. bits. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to tell you, when I first got my new laser, uh, even though I had an idea of, I had a, a smaller laser, the Otour, and then I bought the big OM tech. So I knew lasers, I knew what it was all about. I wasn't about to stick anything inside that machine that was any good. I stuck all junk wood inside of it and let it burn that first so I knew how to use it. So, right. so and you know what? I make myself available because uh, a lot of people don't have the availability. So I tell people, email me if you have questions. Um, I, I try to answer all emails. And, and on the YouTube videos I shoot, I, I, I make sure I answer every single comment. And I take the time because I know people are trying to figure this stuff out. 
So and, and that's really great. And that's the reason I'm glad you came on here, Garrett, tonight. So at least if some people watch this or are out there in the chat and decide they want to try to get a, a CNC, uh, if you uh, he's out there as a source, Garrett is, he's putting himself out there. So if you want to contact him uh, with it, uh, and have a question or whatever, he, he he's more than uh, happy to answer or work with you. And Dan Inge said, I've seen that a lot with 3D printers, CNC lasers, et cetera. They don't offer any training if they yeah. offer training. And, and you're right. The companies themselves do not step out and offer training on most of these machines. Now, uh, some of them will offer training on uh, putting it together and getting the basics as far as it up and running but it's actually how to use the machine or whatever, they don't offer it. Uh, OM Tech, which is my uh, the big laser that I have, the 80 watt, uh, they offer and they show you how to put it together. They offer videos on showing you how to clean the lenses and stuff like that. But as far as the programming and put something together to put in the machine to get it to cut, they don't offer anything. Yeah, so you yeah, know, Dan, I think that that would be a great step if they would hire or pay some people like Garrett or me <laughs> or uh, uh, or Dixon or somebody to or Jim to produce some of the or even Al produce some of these videos, you know, to help people learn how to do it. But they need to get off their butts and pay out there to get these people some information. Go ahead, Garrett. I know. No, oh, you are absolutely right. Man. And that's, uh, there were several holes I, when I started doing that sort of trouble. Like, oh, no, 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 no. And it's like, okay, here's the machine. You know, have at it. And, and yeah, yeah. Because, you know, they don't do the software stuff. So, so even I've, I do one on ones with people. I charge for it, but I do one on one with people. But I'm probably going to start doing actual classes, uh, to get people going in this stuff with the design. Um, the, the, there's that. There's the which machine do they get? Uh, what router bits do they get? Which design software do they get? And then it comes to the making money because a lot of people want to get into it, making money, uh, right. sort of business. With it. And so I've had to address that one too. Where do right. you see that side of your like YouTube life going with the uh, uh, business mentoring kind of uh, videos? So I actually mentor two people. They pay me to mentor them. Uh, where I spend an hour and a half once a week with them and we talk about where they want to go and um, uh, the objectives and, and I, I, I rein them all the way back. I said, why are you here in the first place? We got to understand what your why is. Uh, you know, what, what do you want to get out of? What do you want to get to? And they got to understand the emotions underneath it. Um, so that's that's how I start the mentoring because most a lot of people a lot of people are I uh, just want to get out of my job or I want to replace my income I I need to supplement my retirement and I'm like I want to make you a hundred thousand dollars you know it's it's it, and uh, but they have to understand how to do that and it starts with that foundation of your why and then I start going through a journey to got to understand your customer I don't know if you've heard the saying the riches are in the niches. Right. What I see with a lot of CNCers is they like to just they, they just want to make a lot of stuff. We're we're ADHD, right? We want to make everything, mm -hmm. and and so it's if, if you want to do well on it, number one, you have to have a niche. You have to have the right niche. You have to go after the right customer. That's that's willing to buy your product and pay, you know, decent money for it, and then uh, then you have to learn where they're hanging out at. And so I take them through that journey. And um, so that's 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 part of the business. As far as videos, I do a lot of videos about the business aspect of it too. Try to train people that way. Yeah, I agree. I I always say if you're gonna buy a twenty thousand dollar machine, you better have the sales before you write the check out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Talk about twenty thousand dollar machines. There's there are CNCs that have cost you twenty and thirty thousand dollars out there too. That are oh, yeah. really, really nice. And they do. They do come out, set up, do stuff, you know, maybe train you. Um, shop bot is the one I'm thinking of off the top of my head, but, uh, but they're big cost items, you know. They're, they're big, big, big uh, companies, too. So. 
you got to have repeat parts to pump out or you're not going to pay for that shop. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Can we go back full circle to the beginning of why people do this in the first place? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just it, I, I was sitting here thinking about something that it, it, why why did I get into this? I, I, I was a I was a CNC machinist for many years, then I went to engineering, and I was doing really well. So I'm 59, and three years ago, I just I burned out. I didn't want it anymore. I needed something else, and uh, it was kind of odd. I'll tell you I'll tell you a quick story. So in 2011, my wife Barbara passed away from cancer, and that was kind of a wake up call. That that wait a minute, I'm, I'm I'm working all my life away, and I haven't done so many things. And a year later. My best friend Bob got cancer, and when we were, so that kind of shocked me too. And we were sitting there talking at the, it was about two weeks before he passed away. And he just, he went off into space for a minute. And then he, I was was like, Bob, is there? It was like he was all of a sudden gone. And suddenly he looked back to me and he said, Garrett, if I could do it again, I would have lived in Sedona, right? Like Sedona, Arizona. But I could see that in his, in his eyes that he he had that deep regret for things that he didn't do in his life. That's that's that was like the statement that he made, and it was that moment I said I will never say those words on my deathbed. And yeah. so like next next eight years I went out and did all the stuff I never did. I mean I I hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. So did you, any of you know that trail? Two thousand six hundred miles. Right? Yeah. Wow, and, oh my um, gosh. <laughs> yeah. For six months, and just I lived up in the mountains. I had so much fun. But oh, once we got I got the Appalachian out, Trail here, yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. But once I got done with all that stuff, I was at this place where okay, I'm done now. What? And I didn't know what else there was. I fell into this really deep depression. This was like uh, early 2018, and uh, I, I'm okay with sharing this story, but I was close enough that I had my pistol in my hand. And think what brought me this low, and I, I just knew at that moment I had two choices. I could either go one way, pulling the trigger, or I could go the other way and figure out what that new thing has to be to, wow. to that's going to mean something to me. And it, and at that point, about six months later, I I walked out of work. I said I was done, and I was willing to burn through every ounce of penny I had to figure it out. And. Um, it took a couple of years, and then I landed on the CNC, and I always knew I had like the heart of a teacher, and it just became so natural because of the CNC experience as my, in my career and the engineering, and uh, did a lot of uh, learning under mentors about business, and it's just it just all morphed into this CNC thing. It was like this is what I love to do, teaching people, and and if they if, if they feel like I did, or they're just they want to do something in their life. And they they latch onto the CNC. That's that's the type of person that I that I embrace and say, okay, I will help you with this. And it's okay to have that passion and want to express. But let's just do it the right way, so you don't get all frustrated and throw the towel down again. And, you know, say I can't do it. Yep, do it now. If you want to do something, do it now. Yeah. So Something I like to say, think and, and I don't know where, uh, who was the one that that came up with it but you know you, you die once and you live every day of your life and that's how i look at it you got to live every day of your life yeah yeah absolutely i i think that your th- approach on the cnc is correct because you want to uh the experience that you have had already in the cnc world and engineering world brings you to a point where you would be a good teacher. And I, I've watched some of your videos and I was very impressed that you would be a good in teacher to um, teach people from the beginning and how to do this. And so they wouldn't throw in the towel when they get one of these machines. So they would have somewhere to go to watch and learn from, uh, from an, uh, I want to say infant phase on. So that, that's very good. I watched a few, i I haven't had a chance because I didn't learn and learn about you until Jim brought you up. But I watched a few of your videos, and one of those is one of the uh, last ones you did, like uh, CNC for the beginners or whatever. One of the last ones, and I watched that one in entirety, and I was very impressed. You do a good job. Thank you. Uh, Lynn asked in the chat, "How many videos do you have on programming?" 
uh, program I design, I design uh, probably 50% of my videos are designed. So I think I got 150 videos out right now on my channel. The channel is uh, IDC Woodcraft. Yeah, I've been dropping the link for you. Yeah. Uh, or you do a search for IDC Woodcraft. The, the title they see is different. It says um, CNC Riders for Beginners and Beyond. It's the title that people see, but it's IDC Woodcraft. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, you, I know that we fight with YouTube. Uh, I know uh, Brenda fights with YouTube all the time. What's your name? Sally or whatever that runs you? Susan. Susan. Yeah. Susan. I know she fights with Susan all the time about the YouTube stuff. But um, for what it's worth, and I know YouTube has, YouTube has its problems, and trust me, uh, you love to hate them. And all sincerity, but uh, they are the biggest resource of how to videos that are out there. I mean, yeah, they are. I mean, I have learned so much. Uh, I had a problem with my truck the other day and typed in something. I was like, there's no way this is going to be in there. By God, somebody had a video. <laughs> the exact same problem I was having with that truck. And I went like, no way. So That's yeah, what I tell it. everybody. If you have a little problem, doesn't matter how small it is, make a, make a YouTube video about it. If yes. you saw it, yes. somebody yes. else has that problem. Yes, and now is. YouTube has the shorts program where you can just, you know, grab your phone and do something that's yeah. less than a minute or so. and. Uh, no. And let's not make it climbing on milk crates and eating Tide Pods. Oh. <laughs> have, have you done that, Doug? You know what? You know, I, you know, I don't really wish bad on people, but I will say this much. If you're stupid enough to eat Tide Pods and you're stupid enough to climb on milk crates, well, what, what, what shit happens is all I can say. You know, it just... I've always been a big believer that stupid should hurt. The milk, the milk yeah. crate thing. Now, technically, I have done. Oh my but God! I was working in a grocery <laughs> store <laughs> trying to reach something. It wasn't oh, to make a video. <laughs> I, I got, I got you one up on that one. <laughs> I, I do. I. And this is like thirty years ago. I put a ladder on a wheelbarrow. <laughs> okay, you win. I was almost on that roof in that wheelbarrow too. Hey, save that for <laughs> workshop confession. Yeah, at the yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yes, yeah, so since it is after a little after nine, let's do that. So, all right. So, we have woodshop yeah. confessions here, Garrett. And the woodshop confessions is tell us something that you did that after you did it, you went like, what the hell did I do that for? Like the stupid stuff though. Uh, or do you want to tell us about the more experience about the ladder and the wheelbarrow issue, but tell us something good and juicy. And let me tell you, blood counts. If you have you know, a broken leg or whatever, that counts even better. So give us one of your stories. Well, I, I don't have a blood. I do have a blood story, but it's kind of boring. Uh, it, it, it was, I, I was I was cutting something on my table saw and I was tired, hungry, angry, and 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 angry. Oh you know, yeah, I was, yeah. And I was trying to push this thing. I just sliced my thumb right now. Oh well, uh, you don't know this group though. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Tell us about the ladder incident in the wheelbarrow. Why did you put a ladder in a wheelbarrow? I don't know because it's. What? A, a, you know what? A couple of feet. Four foot <laughs> extension. Yeah, you know what? It was it was thirty years ago, so I'm okay telling you that one. Was it pre OSHA? Uh, was that pre OSHA? Yeah. Was it pre OSHA? Yeah. Yeah. Now this was is that. Roll, did you need was the it extension? Or or did you did you need the extension or did you need the mobility? I needed the height. I just needed that much because I, I had like a six foot ladder and I needed to get up on the roof. And uh, the ladder, I just couldn't make it to get on the roof. So, oh, yeah, the wheelbarrow will work. Uh-huh. And I, I swore I almost broke my arm, but I didn't. Oh, my gosh. I got one more. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a wood shop story, but it's my most embarrassing moment in my entire life. And okay, I was on the volunteer, we'll volunteer fire department, and I was a rookie. And the, the fire alarm went off. And so... I got in the jump seat, the guy that's wearing a backpack and the air pack. And, and the guy next to me is a brand new rookie too. We were like a week old and 
Then the person sitting next to him was not a rookie, but they probably shouldn't have been a firefighter, right? So the truck is driving down the street. You get the officer in the front and the guy is driving. And it's literally the call is like three houses down from the fire station. So the, the officer on the truck said, don't go anywhere. It was like a fire kitchen fire. And uh, so the truck starts out of the station rear, 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 and stops, right? And, and as soon as we stop, the person sitting next to us says, that house right there. And me and this other guy just went in automatic mode. We jumped off the fire truck, grabbed our ladders. We had our masks on, going, ah, ah, you know, doing the Darth Vader thing. And we're at the door, and you're trained to get down on your hands and knees with that water fire hose like that. And the door opens, and this is like 9, 10 at night. And there's some lady, old lady with her, her nightgown on. Going, What's going on? <laughs> we're at the wrong house. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wrong house. <laughs> Me and this guy, Mike, we stood up. We ran back to the fire, literally. We just ran. <laughs> That is actually the greatest story I've ever heard. <laughs> because uh, even though you didn't know it, Garrett, I started out at 15 years old as a junior firefighter, a volunteer mm -hmm. firefighter. And uh, when I turned 18, I went to work for the fire department and I retired at 47 years old as a, a professional firefighter. <laughs> That's the greatest story I've ever heard. How many times did you go to the wrong house, Russ? I never went to the wrong. We never went to the wrong house. Come on, Russ right? ain't going to admit it. Going to I have a few blunders in my in my uh, career that we did, but we never went to the wrong house. I, real quick, one of the best moments of my life that I ever remember is we were county firefighters, and they put us in the volunteer fire stations to help supplement the volunteers. So like when the volunteers work eight to five, five days a week. So we were there to help, you know, during, we would get the fire truck there and the volunteers would join us, so to speak, to help put the fire out. But they had to have jobs. So we got the fire truck there and started everything. Anyway, to make a long story short. So we pull up on this house fire and it's really burning in this garage. And we get out of the truck and it wasn't like two or three minutes and we're like pulling the hose, get ready to go to attack the garage. And all these volunteers are running up. Well, the guy was a self uh, race car maker. So he had uh, acetylene and oxygen tanks in there for cutting torches and stuff like that in there. Well, they went off and they actually blew the roof off the garage of the house. And we, and when I heard it, when you hear the explosion, it's too late. There's nothing you can do. So I heard it, and I just kind of cringed for a few seconds. And at, we actually felt shingles fall down on top of us. And my partner did the same thing. We just kind of stood there like, oh, yeah, this is it. I'm gone. I'm going. I'm, there ain't nothing we can do about it. And we felt the shingles falling down on us. And we stopped for a second and turned around. Hey, we're alive. Every one of those damn volunteers was underneath the fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, all five or six of them were of them. underneath that fire truck. With they were underwear. They were getting underneath the truck to get the heck out of the way from everything. It's like, so I never will forget that because I, I was like, where did everybody go? And they're all crawling out from underneath the fire truck. <laughs> am, am I right? Do I remember right that uh, those acetylene tanks are made to blow at the top, at the top before they? Yes, that's the reason it took the roof off of the garage is because they're made to blow straight up. Right. That had to be interesting. That had to be interesting. Yep, they're made to blow straight up. But that was just about the funniest thing. Is like, where would everybody go? And then they all start climbing out from underneath the truck. And it's like, I never will forget that. I sit there and laugh my butt off for a while. So they had an explosion. Flaming shingles coming down them, and they crawl up underneath the gas tank. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I guess you can look at it that way. To protect themselves. There's yeah. a sign. Protect That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, they. I guess you could see it that way, but 
uh, it it literally, I mean, it rained shingles down for uh, probably. Uh, well, it rained shingles down on the truck. It rained shingles down across the street and on the two houses. It was in a neighborhood. On the next two houses, it rained shingles down. We had to go around actually and make sure that we put the shingles out because when the shingles blew off, they were on fire themselves. And, wow. and some of them were on top of the truck on fire. So, so it was, it, I had never experienced anything like that. It was just like, boom. And it's like, and those tanks, and you're right, uh, Garrett, they, they, it was just nothing but a perfect, beautiful blue flame shooting straight up in the air <laughs> from those tanks. It was like, it was something to behold, trust me. Well, guys, it's uh, time to say goodnight. It's 10 after 9, and I told Garrett we'd only be on here for an hour, hour and a half. So I appreciate uh Thank you, Garrett. Uh, a lot of good information. Yep. Yeah, that was. Yeah, and, and all the different ways that we do it. And I'm looking forward to talking to you guys. Yeah. Well, I, I hope that uh, some of the people, if they have any questions about it, will get in contact with you. And uh, uh, they've posted it out there in the chat, and I'll make sure that I post it so people uh, can get in contact with him. Uh, so that'll be great. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, um, Brenda and Al and Paul and Chris and Jim and Donald and Dixon. Thank you for all y'all being on tonight. I appreciate it so very much. Uh, and once again, thank you, Garrett. And if you want, I'll make sure that I put in the chat, uh, it won't be tonight, but probably tomorrow, but his information on where you can find him and to be able to contact him and ask him questions. If you need his YouTube channel and everything, I'll put all that out there so you can find it. So if you have any questions for him, um, I looked at, uh, like I said, I looked at the long mill uh, CNC and I, I, uh, I'm not discounting it for the one that I want to replace the one that I have. Uh, so I am looking at that and, uh, I'll let y'all know. Uh, I haven't made my decision up yet. I got to pay off my laser first. That was a <laughs> chunk of change right there. Let me tell you, I got to pay that off first. So that was a chunk of change. But yeah, I, I'm looking at buying a new CNC, and I'll uh, I'll take it in consideration. So, all right. Thank you all for being out there. I know Bill Aussie man, he's been out there. Uh, Brian Warner's been out there. Uh, Lynn's handcrafted wood design, James Parker, uh, Jeff Walsma uh, joined us at the last minute, uh, Chris Neeland, um, Jimbo, yeah, James Parker, Jimbo, that's James Parker, uh, all y'all have been out there, uh, I'm going back through trying to see Dan Inge from Dan Inge, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle Marcou, uh, all y'all have been out there, and I appreciate it so very, very much that you're out there every week and uh, when you we have these shows. I appreciate it so very much. Listen, if you're too darn busy to get out in your shop and make some sawdust, you're just too darn busy. <clears throat> just get me sawdust, lots of sawdust. All around me and everywhere, I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching. And God night, bless. And girls. Good night, everyone. Remember, you don't have to go home, but you cannot stay here. What he said. Nope. Can't stay here. You got.